Hey, David from Flash by VCycleNet. Just uh, remaking an old video or editing it about deleting O2 sensors because I still get so many questions about them. So if you have a question, why we disable the O2 sensor in a flash, watch the video. Thanks, guys. The question that I get all the time is about O2 sensors and why with the flash that we want to disable them. Usually a lot of people are familiar with car tuning. Uh, cars have wide band O2 sensors on them. We have narrow band O2 sensors on our bikes. The only bike I'm aware of that has a wide band from its stock is the new BMW S1000RR, so tuning that would be a little different. We probably wouldn't want to disable them, but I don't have any experience tuning them, so I'm not really sure. But on almost all the Yamahas, all the other bikes we tune, disable the O2 sensor. And first thing I want to talk about is air-fuel ratio. So air-fuel ratio gets your bike's lean, your bike's rich, people talk about it all the time. Um, and they say it like it's a matter of fact that your bike is rich or your bike is lean. But the reality is, is that air fuel ratio jumps all over the place. If you look at a dyno chart with an air fuel ratio on it, you'll generally see the air fuel curve going up and down. And then at places it will be lean and at places it will be rich. And what do lean and rich mean, right? So the, there is no ideal air fuel ratio, at least in tuning for throttle response and best power. If you read the internet, like most people do, most people will come back with an answer of like 13.1 to 1, excuse me, which would mean 13.1 parts of air to one part fuel. So as you get richer, you get more fuel, which so you get 12 and a half or 12 parts of air to, to the same, to one fuel. And as you get leaner, the number would go higher. So a higher number is leaner, smaller numbers richer and we're generally looking for a number depending on where we're tuning for best power for a naturally aspirated it's usually in the low 13s and honestly in all the bikes I've tuned 13.1 has not generally been the number that it ends up at uh, when we're tuning or when I'm tuning I don't tune to an air fuel ratio I tune to best power so I figure out which what the air fuel ratio the bike wants and then you tune it to so what's an O2 sensor do to, to, to try to help these things? So first O2 sensor, O2 sensor we'll talk about is a, a wide end O2 sensor. And this is the one that everybody that says, especially if you're coming from the car world, the cars have wide band O2 sensors in them. And what that does is, I'm sure it's hard to read the chart, but basically what you're doing is you're looking at a response curve. So an O2 sensor is a type of galvanic cell. And I, I, I'm gonna start right off like if I say something wrong, <laughs> it's too bad. <laughs> so, uh, if we plotted voltage over air fuel ratio, air fuel, this might not be exactly representative of what it is, but you get a nice linear line, right? So that if if this is five volts, almost everything on a on a in the car is zero to five volts, or digital is zero to five volts. So. Basically, this air fuel ratio from like 10 to 20, as the air fuel ratio goes up, you would get a linear response in the voltage that's coming out of the O2 sensor. So it's called a wide band O2 sensor because it works well over a wide variety of air fuel ratios. So if we have a signal coming back from this, if we didn't come again, we're gonna make up numbers, but let's say at 14, 14, 14 to one air fuel, it put out 2.5 volts. Again, making it up doesn't really matter. If we go a little bit leaner and we go to 14.3, that might be like 2.6 or 2.7 volts. The thing that's important is, is that it's a recognizable difference. So, so you can, use this signal back and you can see where your air fuel ratio is as the voltage gets lower the air fuel is getting leaner or richer and as the voltage goes up the air fuel is getting leaner and because you have a nice linear response curve it makes those changes measurable remember with anything you always have a margin of error so you know you make 100 O2 sensors they're all not going to put out the same exact voltage at the same exact air fuel ratio there's going to be some variations between them. And there's also going to just be variations between sensors, um, just being the way they're made, and like I said, variation and margin of error. So even 
Um, it's just knowing that nothing's perfect. You're always going to get a little variation between them. I guess I should have brought an eraser. So what's different about a narrow band M2 sensor is it has more of a curve like this. And what you see is you've got voltage, air, fuel, where you have this. And I, I tried to do some research before I did this so that it could be as accurate as possible. But the best I could find is that this area here is somewhere between 14.3 and 15.1. So on our motorcycles, we generally want to be on this side here. We want to be at part throttle, high 13s, low, or full throttle, more in the low 13 to ones. But all of that is on this side of that curve. So if you're below 14.3, the voltage that you get back is almost the same as you go back. So we know it's richer than 14.3, but how much richer? I don't know, because the difference in the voltage is so small. When you add back in margin of error and variation from sensor to sensor, it makes this O2 sensor almost useless for anything richer than 14.3, which richer than 14.3 is where we want to be no matter whether we're tuning part throttle full throttle whatever we're tuning so that's why this o2 sensor is not useful for us when we're trying to tune a motorcycle what it's trying to do is it's always trying to get the signal back into this happy space for it which is between 14.3 and 15.1 again tuning for what we want for proper throttle response or for best power so not what we want some people sell O2 optimizers, like when you buy a power commander, you include an O2 optimizer, and some companies sell O2 optimizers, and you say, well, okay, a lot of people are under the impression that, like, well, now my narrow band's going to work like a wide band, but it can't, because no matter what you do, the device that you're using, it's the device measuring air fuel, this response curve is still so flat in that area. You can cheat, and you can try to you know, manipulate that I know if I'm up in this 0.9 volt area that, that I'm about where I need to be. So you could be good. And you know that if I'm down here, that, you know, you could be trying to drive it up into this area. But in the end, it doesn't have enough response change from one variation to the next to be useful. When I flash the ECU, one of the first things I do is I go in and I disable this narrow band O2 sensor. And why do we do that? Because if it's active, it overrides any changes that we, that we try to make in the flash. So if you looked at a power commander on the newer bike and you look at the instructions, they'll give you a whole block of RPMs and throttle ranges to not even make any changes in, in the chart. And that's because that's where the O2 sensor is active. So when this O2 sensor is active, it overrules everything we do, and that includes on the the main fueling tables in the ECU, or if you're using a piggyback device like a power commander, the O2 sensor, when it's active, is gonna to try to get you back into this 14.3 to 15.1. Again, we can use an O2 optimizer to try to, to make it better, but in the end, it's never gonna have a response curve like the wideband O2 sensor that we use when we tune. When I tune, I do I use a wideband O2 sensor in the, in the exhaust to measure the air fuel, and then I also have gas that has a known 13.1 air fuel ratio and I check my O2 sensors regularly to make sure that they're working properly. When they get out of range, then you toss it out and get a new one. And they do go bad. Um, I'm sure tuning is not the easiest environment for them, but they, they do go bad. Hey, thanks guys for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe and like button for more motorcycle related content.